It is a beautiful Thursday and I'm just gonna practice. So if you're here early, hey, if you're watching the archive, you can always skip ahead a couple minutes to once we really get going. Feel free to say hi in the chat. I'm gonna finish getting set up here. Hey Vinny, thanks for joining. Gonna let a couple more people get here and then we'll get started. Hey guys, hi everyone who's just popping in. Feel free to say hi in the chat. Gonna get rolling pretty soon. I was gonna do this earlier today, but then they were buzz sawing something in my apartment. There's construction going on, they're renovating some units, so there was just saws going all day it was too much so I couldn't stream earlier today but I think they're done now it's just really windy so you might hear some banging around it's my windows from the wind but other than that we should be good in terms of sound and if you guys don't hear me or things are too quiet or too loud if anything sounds weird just let me know So today, if you guys haven't tuned into any of my practice sessions lately, I'm trying to be really diligent about really practicing. I did a video, I don't know, a few weeks ago about how I haven't practiced in a long time. So I'm trying to get back into a good practice rhythm. Um, so the stream is going to be mostly me practicing. I'm going to try to talk to you guys and check in with you when, you can, when I can and answer questions, but I am mostly going to be practicing. Um, I usually aim to do like at least 15 minutes of warm up, so I'll start with scales and stuff like that. Hopefully it'll give you guys some ideas of how you can, you know, adapt your own practicing. And then uh, from there, I'll get into some Bach is what I'm gonna be playing today, which I know is everybody's favorite for the most part. Um, and yeah, feel free to throw me your questions, all that kind of stuff. I'm just not gonna be looking at the chat constantly, but I will be checking in with it when I can. Hey Dario, thanks for stopping by. And if you guys are liking the video and you wanna give it a thumbs up, that's awesome. Um, the thumbs up actually make a big difference because it shows it, YouTube then knows that people are liking it so then more people get shown or recommended the video. Okay. If you're wondering why I'm hunching over the floor, this is my other computer where I'm checking on what you guys are saying. Hello, everyone who is just arriving. So I'm going to be mostly just actually practicing, but I am going to talk to you guys when I can. Um, I'll be playing some Bach after I do my warm ups. And hey, Gabriel, thanks for stopping by. I'm so glad, you know, I don't plan these, I do them kind of spontaneously, so it's great that you guys are able to just show up without any notice. I super appreciate it. Okay. Well, why don't I just get tuned up and get going? I don't know what I'm waiting for. My cello was really out of tune because it was super warm here in LA, uh, like 90 something degrees. And then I guess a cold front came in because today it's crazy windy and it's like 30 degrees colder. So naturally my gut strings wanted to protest, so they're all over the place. So I'll probably be tuning and retuning a lot. Hey Mary, thank you guys for stopping by. Um, I'm gonna turn this down a little cause the cello's louder than me. Hopefully the volume will be okay. I'm gonna get tuned up here. You guys who've watched my live streams know this Korg thing that I use, but I love it. And if you have questions about cello supplies and stuff like that, I have all my favorite things in my Amazon shop, which is linked uh, in the description of the video. Hey everyone, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Just to listen to little old me practice, I really appreciate it. Yeah, look how out of tune I am. Hey guys. Hey 
I'm so used to it. I actually like tuning with the pegs better than the fine tuners, if you can believe it, because I feel like you're able to just lock the fifths in in a way that really resonates, whereas like the fine tuners are like, yeah, a little this way, a little that way. The pegs really just get you to really lock it in. I don't know, I just like it better. if you have to go leave to do your own practicing. My practicing is here to inspire your practicing. I think I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit lower. Let's look at my water here. Oh no, I see the buzz saw guys. I hope they're not going to go back at it. I think they're done sawing. That was a loud commotion today with the sawing. Okay, let's bring this down just a little. Oh, now you can see my recorder thing. Let me move that. Yeah, you can still kind of see it though. Whatever. You get the idea. Okay. Um, hey, Kevin, thanks for stopping by. Doing physics problems, that sounds hard, but maybe some scales will help with that? I don't know. Um, hey Matthew, thanks for coming by the stream. All right, I'm in tune enough. Enough dilly-dallying, time to get to work, that's why I'm here. I stream these sessions to motivate myself too, so I can't get totally distracted or else it defeats the purpose of the stream, right? I'm here to practice. Okay, so any of you guys that have watched the, uh, the practice streams before probably know my warm-up routine front and back, but I'm going to do it. I do major scales, two octaves, I go around circle of fifths, I go up to three sharps and three flats, because that covers about every key we see most often in the Baroque period. Um, so I'm going to do that. I have a couple different bow strokes that I use for the scale. So I'm just going to cycle through my bow strokes, going through the circle of fifths, major scales. You get the idea. Um, Eric about, so you're asking about temperaments. Um, I, to be honest, like I, I don't think I tune an equal fifth. I tune what sounds right to me, which I think is a more, am I remembering this correctly? A more wide fifth is more towards the pure intonation sound. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. I really just kind of tune my fifths by ear what I like, which I don't think is probably an equal fifth, but somewhere around there. Um, tuning with harmonics uh, versus octaves. So on gut strings on a Baroque instrument, I do not tune with harmonics. <laughs> But, you know, we all see modern cellos do that, and I will tune a modern cello that way. But I really like, for the sake of temperaments and tuning, and also peg tuning on the Baroque cello with the gut strings, I like to just tune by the sound of the fifth. So I take my A from a tuner, and then... I just listen to the fifths until I like them. I think they are... You guys can be the judge. Or I could do a case study right now and check on my tuner if I'm equal, but I don't think I'm equal temperament with these. I tend to want my fifths a little more wide. Hopefully that is a clear enough answer. All right, going to get going on some scales.
already feel myself going into a scale trance. It happens. Um, I do practice outside of the live streams, though probably not as much as I should, but also I live stream like pretty often, so even if I only practice on the live streams, wouldn't it be that bad, right? No, but I do practice sometimes not in front of a camera. Where was it? So just in case you're wondering what I'm thinking about and what everyone should be thinking about with scales, being relaxed, it's a great time to practice no tension, you know, really just relaxing everything because it's a scale, it should feel easy, low stress. So eliminating tension, waking up all the different muscle groups that you're going to need to need, need to need, need to use to play. Um, and then what else? On my Baroque bow, I'm always thinking about strong, weak, strong, weak, to some extent with the bow. Um, and that's about it. I'm going to keep going through. stroke um, and yes Bufar that the Baroque bow always has that nice decrescendo from the light tip gives us a nice articulation okay so I'm gonna get into my next bow stroke what was I gonna tell you guys um, I had an interesting week I was on a local radio show here in LA um, as a musical guest so I played at the end of the show I played two 17th century pieces and then did a little short interview um, the show is called The Life Changes Show, and there's a link to that on my Facebook page. So if you're curious to check out that interview, uh, it's about an hour-long segment, and I'm in like the last 10 or so minutes. Oh no, more tool sounds. Can you guys hear that? Hopefully it won't be going on too long. Or I'll just play over it. Um, so if you want to check that out, my Facebook page is facebook.com slash emilyplayscello, and you should see the link there. Hopefully it's not going to get too noisy. That's already why I started the stream as late as I did today. Oh, and I'm moving slow. Yes, the power tools have come out. They gotta be going home soon. Sad times. All right, let's see if my scales covers up that awful sound. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to move on to my long 
short, short bow stroke. Terrible sounds! It's like a duet for cello and buzzsaw. scales. Thank you guys for being patient. Um, so I'm just going to keep on moving through my cycle of scales and hope they stop. That's all we can do. By the way, this long short short bow stroke is the best for warming up fingers. Anyone who's watched my bow hold videos on broke bow knows how much I need the finger dexterity to get the articulations. So this is my favorite bow stroke to wake up your fingers. <laughs> because it's just a complete half step lower than A. If you have perfect pitch, it'll definitely be harder. Um, but if you don't have perfect pitch, it's just a half step lower. I think 430, which is like the classical pitch, is actually a lot harder because it's not an even half step below. Man, this is so bad. This is worse than it was earlier today. Come on, guys. Wow, they're like really going to work. I don't even know what they're doing. I think they're like cutting a countertop. Um, yeah, this is tragic. I don't know if I'll have to end the stream if they keep going. I'll have to think about it. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep playing the scales. You guys, what I, can you let me know when I'm playing, how much can you hear the power tools? Like, is it totally overshadowing my playing, or can you still hear me? Because um, if it's, like, unlistenable might have to end the stream, but hopefully they'll be done and you can still hear the cello when I'm playing. So anyway, I'm going to keep going through the scales.
Okay, good. Hey, Dr. Crystal, thanks for stopping by. Okay, I'm glad that I can outshine the power tools. I'm gonna keep practicing for that then. Okay, it's really loud for me. I feel like I have to scream over it, but I'm glad it's not loud for you guys. Okay, where was I? What did I just play? D major? Okay, on to A major. Angeles. The houses here cost millions of dollars. Um, so I just live in an apartment. Um, Caro or Carol? Is it Carol or Caro? Or Caro? 
Um, I do not know what you're talking about by Bach, but maybe it's an aria or something that I have not played it or I don't recognize what it is. Um, I've taught school orchestras before, um, never like as a full-time job, but like I've come in and taught, like I've done lectures at schools about Baroque instruments, I've taught sectionals and stuff like that. So I've done a lot of teaching. I've pretty much taught, I have taught literally every, every level. And my students have been as young as four, and I think my oldest student is 69 years old. And I have taught everything in between. <laughs> People in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 20s, teens, middle school, I've literally taught every age. And they're all equally, like, I like them all for different reasons. Um, okay, I feel like I have to keep playing to overshadow the power tools. Um, this really is so unfortunate because I was going to do the stream hours ago, like earlier today, but they were doing this and then they stopped and I was like, great, I can live stream now. Nope, more power tools. So, what's next? Oh, okay, so now I go through my sev check bow exercises. So I'm gonna do the same cycle of major scales on some different rhythms, like variants of eighth notes, quarter notes, 16th notes. Um, teaching a school orchestra is a really cool experience. Um, for me personally, I only wanna do it like sometimes. I don't know if I'd wanna do it every day. Um, being a teacher, like a public school teacher, uh, it's a very important job, but it's a hard job. It's tiring being at school every day, dealing with the whole public school system. So it's definitely hard, but if you love it, you can make such a difference. My orchestra teacher is the reason why I started taking cello lessons and why I became a cellist was from my orchestra teacher at public school. So those people make a huge difference in people's lives, but it's a hard job for sure. Um, I don't really play progressive music. Pretty much everything I play is Baroque and old school. That's just me. Um, the difference between ages. Well, when you teach adults, like I would say someone in their 20s or older, um, you can talk to them like an adult. So you can talk about things in a little bit more of a complex way than you could talk to like a 10 year old. Um, so you can just, you can explain things more, which is kind of nice, but um, the older you are, the slower your brain learns things oftentimes. Like when you're a kid, your brain is just absorbing information all the time. So kids tend to learn things faster and retain things more easily and just make progress faster just naturally because their brain is more malleable. Whereas when you're an adult, it takes a little bit longer to, to learn things and to really get the hang of things. So that's sort of the difference between teaching adults versus teaching kids. <laughs> improvising with the power tools. I, I'm trying to tune the power tools out, to be honest. It's not working, though. Um, okay, so let me keep playing. I'm going to go into my rhythms. Thank you guys for enduring the noise. Why don't we all just, like, send messages out into the universe that they're going to finish in the next five minutes? Maybe that'll help. I don't think so, though. It's 4.30 here. I feel like they're probably going to finish at 5. I'm going to keep practicing. So, um, okay, I'm going to go through the same scales, different rhythms now. Triplets are always good to practice on a string instrument because 
each group of three starts in another direction, which is just makes it harder to do, especially fast. So I always recommend practicing triplets. <laughs> I give Skype lessons if you want to set up some lessons. Um, so I have actually, I have a couple students that I teach over Skype now. It actually works a lot better than I thought it would initially. So yes, I do offer Skype lessons. Um, <laughs> the good vibes thing I think worked temporarily because they did stop for like a few minutes. <laughs> okay. I'm warmed up. Yeah, I've been warming up for like half an hour. I'm good to go. Let's play some Bach. Let me just grab my Bach. Okay, so I'm going to play Prelude to the second Bach Suite, D minor which I've decided I am going to be playing for an audition that I'm doing next month. And I was actually leaning towards, sorry, I know my head's cut off. I was leaning towards um, doing something from the first suite. And then I played through this prelude and I was just like, you know what? I love this prelude. I think I'll do this instead. I have a, a recording of this prelude on my channel that I did in one take spontaneously one day. This is just for whatever reason, this piece just, I played it for, which recital was this? Which recital was this? Oh, it sounds so nice when the power tools stop. Um, was it my undergrad recital? Yeah, I think it was. So I think I did uh, the second suite for my undergrad recital, and so I just practiced it so hard. I worked, anytime I had a recital, I just worked my ass off. So, um, because of that, you just, when you really work hard on a piece, like months and months and months of diligent practice, you just never forget it. I mean, you may have to dust it off a bit, but just like the technique is so ingrained. So that's kind of how I feel about the prelude of this suite. Hey Abundance, so um, I am at this time, I have not even been in LA for a year yet. So I'm not playing with any studio orchestras or anything like that yet. Um, I play mostly on my Baroque cello, so I try to stick to period instrument gigs, which there's not a ton of in LA, but there are a couple of groups that do play on period instruments. So that's sort of my main focus, more so than like the film and 
what they mostly have out here, which is like film orchestras and stuff. sure how I'm going to practice this right now. I'm just going to start playing it and see what compels me. Here we go. D minor box suite prelude. Maybe I'll move this a little closer. I not like I really need the music, but you know, it doesn't hurt. issues holding the cello. Um, hey Chris, um, I have not heard that about the second cello suite, but that's definitely interesting. I think we are not totally sure uh, what order Bach even wrote the suites in. I, I have heard that there's, the Bach cello suites just have so much mystery around them, so much information that we want to know but don't know yet, or maybe we'll never know. And also a lot of rumors that go around, like viola players trying to say the Bach cello suites were written for viola. Like, come on. No. Sorry, violist. No. All right, back to this prelude. Prelude for cello and power tools. <laughs> You are totally right. Obviously, they're not for viola, but just, you know, people will make up these rumors. <laughs> Bach played viola, but yeah, no, he wouldn't have written them in bass clef. You're right. Okay, so this sequence, I'm going to practice it. Maybe I'll take the slurs out and really just work through the notes. I wonder if you guys can still hear me now that I'm not pointed quite as much. If I move this over, though, it's going to be in the shot, so maybe not. Okay. Um... The difference between a Baroque cello bow and a modern cello bow. So I have a great video about this on my channel. I'll give a little sum up right now, but if you want to know more about the constructional differences of Baroque instruments versus modern, just go to my channel and go to the instructional videos playlist. There's everything you ever wanted to know. Um, 
So here's my modern bow. Uh, let's see here. And here's my Baroque bow. So different curve, convex versus concave. The modern bow, the stick curves in towards the bow hair, and the Baroque bow, it curves away. And the modern bow was basically designed to have even distribution of weight across the whole bow so that we could have an even bow stroke and that our up bows and our down bows could be roughly the same in weight by making a more square, heavy tip. But the tips were lighter in the Baroque period and we actually didn't want everything to be equal. Um, the Baroque bow is basically built to have a natural decrescendo. When you start at the frog and go out to the tip, the sound is going to taper because the tip of the bow is lighter. And then when you go to do an up bow, that's going to be a lighter bow stroke than a down bow because the tip is so much lighter than the frog. And that inequality is something that they liked in the Baroque period and they worked with that inequality. So then as we wanted music to become more like all the same sounding, all our notes the same, we got the modern bow. And there's also transitional bows, classical bows. So bows did not just go from A to B. There was an evolution of bows uh, throughout the different time periods. So this instrument um, is actually not officially a Baroque cello. It was built in the 1950s as a modern cello, but it was converted to a roughly Baroque setup um, about 20 years after it was built. And when I got it, it was already in this pseudo Baroque setup. Um, but if you live in a city, like a major metropolitan area that has, um, you know, good instrument dealers, more and more people are playing on these old instruments. So either uh, replicas like this one are available or even actual antique instruments in Baroque setup. But basically, you know, I've got no end pin, no fine tuners on the tailpiece, the fingerboard is shorter, the strings are made of gut. That's the quick one, run around of how it's different. Um, okay. Back to this annoying spot in the prelude, I'm going to take the slurs out and focus on just getting the notes because it's this kind of hard sequence with string crossings just to get it in tune and sounding good. strings, especially when you're in a higher position, and I just never want to do it. i got to force myself. you want before you play it. I don't know why, it's like 98% chance, more likely, that you will get it in tune if you're hearing it first. I would love to play this cello in an old castle. To be fair, I've played it in a lot of old churches, which are kind of like old castles. Especially when I lived on the East Coast, like Boston, Connecticut, there are so many old, old churches there, and I got to play in a lot of really cool ones, so... Almost. 
When the power tools stop, it's like I've never heard silence before. It sounds so, it's like just the silence sounds beautiful. When you get used to tuning out the sound of power tools, silence is really a gift. Maybe they're done, maybe they're done. You guys probably can't hear it as much as I can, but it's so loud to me. as my modern cello but uh yes it's not a hundred hundred percent but it's got the short fingerboard basic tail piece gut strings baroque bow okay i'll pick up where i left off and see if i can remember to get closer to the bridge on some of that fourth position stuff. Alonzo, if you want to learn more about all my instrument stuff, um, I've got a bunch of videos on my instructional videos playlist where I talk about every little detail of the instrument. Let's see. Thank you. 
actually quite dry today, um, but I oiled my strings with olive oil earlier this week and it made such a difference. If you play on gut strings and you're in a dry climate, put a little bit of olive oil on like a paper towel. It probably should be a rag, honestly, not a paper towel, but I use a paper towel. Um, and just rub it on the strings, not where you go, but just like up here. It makes such a difference. My strings sound so good now. Um. <laughs> I don't have a name for my cello. People ask me that all the time. And I did not name this cello. Sad, I know. since I started this stream. So thanks for joining. I'm practicing. I'm playing the prelude to the second Bach cello suite on my Baroque cello. Did some scales and warm-ups. I am accompanied by power tools in my apartment building that I did not think were going to make noise during this stream. Though they're being quiet right now. Now they're still at work. Any second there will be noise again. But we're, we're getting through it. Back to this prelude. this way. I always have to be putting my tip down to not squeak the A string. Um, so, well, I didn't even, uh, <laughs> Bufar, you read my mind. I did not even see that you asked the squeaking question. I was just going to tell you anyway. Um, I mean, gut strings squeak and squawk if you do anything to them. Anyone who starts playing on gut strings for the first time goes nuts with how much they squeak because you really do have to learn like the exact touch that they require. Um, and I'm very used to gut strings now, so for the most part I can sound decent on them, but if they get really dry, they squeak more easily. And then certain articulations, you know, I've mastered being able to do like a slow bow, a slow deeper bow stroke. Modern bow and steel strings, we tend to play this way, um, but a gut string will not sound good like that. You have to be a little bit more dense with your stroke. So that I'm really used to. Um, but the A string for me, it's if my angle is not exactly straight, I'll get a squeak. For other people, it's usually like if their bow speed is too fast, which I've gotten used to the bow speed thing, but still sometimes my A string tip is a little questionable and then I'll get a squeak. Sometimes you get a squeak even when you're doing everything right though. I mean, there's a certain amount that you deal with when you're with natural materials that you can't control it all the time. The button doesn't do anything. Well, I mean, it holds the tailpiece hardware. So you can see the tailpiece. So it holds the tailpiece. But if it weren't the button, it would be the end pin hardware holding the tailpiece. Um, 
Oh, thanks for checking out my Gabrielli videos. I love Gabrielli. Um. Okay, back to this passage, aiming for no squeaks. <laughs> to my A string angle a little bit more. correct in order to fix it. squeaking out. Problem solving as a practice is all about. Uh, I'm bowing with the, with the edge of the hair. I rarely play flat bow hair. Um, yeah, I very rarely. Maybe for chords, but I'm pretty much always using the side of the bow hair. Okay, I'm gonna play that passage again and I'm actually gonna continue on past it this time, maybe. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
practice those arpeggiations. That could be practiced. Um, Um, okay. Yeah, so these chords, for those of you who know this prelude, you know it ends with a bunch of chords. And most modern players just play the chords. But I like to arpeggiate them, it's just cooler. And there's nothing saying that they wouldn't have actually done that. Because um, chords are a great opportunity to arpeggiate. So, ah, oh, the tools are back. But maybe I'll practice them as actual chords and double stops, and then I'll work on the arpeggiations. stream and turn it off, the guys are going to go home. It's just the way it works, right? I think what I'll do, maybe I'll just play this whole prelude through, even though it'll be questionable. I didn't practice it that much on this stream. And then we'll call it, because I've been streaming for over an hour now. So... Thank you guys for coming by. I'm going to play this prelude. I'm not totally done yet, but I just want to say thank you for stopping by the stream, being tolerant to the sound of the tools outside, um, and just generally hanging out. Um, if you enjoy the stream and you want to help me out, you can leave me a donation at the GoFundMe. The link is right there um, or in the description of the video. You can also consider joining my Patreon, which supports all the videos that I do on my YouTube channel. Uh, also a link to that in the description, but mostly just be awesome if you could subscribe if you haven't already and Yeah, so um, here we go. Let's play this prelude Whatever happens happens squeaks power tools at all sound of the tools. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
the end, getting my elbow loosened up for those. And that spot that I practiced earlier still wasn't that good, but it shows I know what to practice. Um, yeah, I am at a 415. Yes, I am at a 415. Um, okay, so even though, of course, now the power tools are probably finishing up. Yeah, they're wiping down the surface. I think they're done just in time. Well, oh well. I think I'm going to call it. I'm kind of pooped out. But thank you guys so much again for stopping by, hanging out with me while I practice. Um, as I always say, I try to do these live streams like at least once a month. If you're subscribed to my channel, it should email you when I go live. I mean, it's supposed to. I don't know if it emails everybody, but in theory it's supposed to, so make sure you're subscribed. Um, and join my Patreon if you want to support the channel. Um, if you want to just tip me for today's stream, you can do that in Super Chat, actually, or you can do it uh, at the GoFundMe below. And thank you, guys. I will be back another time, more practicing. You can always keep up with me on all my social media stuff, Instagram, everything is... Emily plays cello, so you know where to find me. And yeah, I think I'm going to call it for today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. And I will see you next time.